Coming up, another change is coming to the Trump administration after a resignation announcement. And President Trump tweeted again about Maryland Representative Elijah Cummings in his Baltimore district a day after his initial tweets raised an outcry. Plus in Italy, a tornado killed one woman after picking up the car she was in and throwing it. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 632 on Monday, July the 29th. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning into Mountain News this morning. Today is going to be a little bit warmer, but the sun is going to be out. It's all bringing in some rain afterwards. Let's bring in Brandon this morning as he returns to the best show in the world. Brandon, good morning. Good morning. And that's our, that's right. Night side, ain't got what we've got here in the mornings. Mm -hmm. We've got spunk here. That's right. Let's take a look and see what's going on across the region. Foggy outside the WIMT studios. We're going to continue to see, again, some uh, dreary conditions, at least on the surface this morning. Once that fog goes by, though, things will look much better. Four miles of visibility at Moorhead, eight in Nashville there. So I-64 seeing a little bit of fog and visibility issues, but the biggest bulk of it down in the Cumberland Valley, Harlan and Middlesbrough, a mile or less. They are close to zero visibility in Middlesbrough right now. Satellite Light radar for the last few hours. Pretty quiet. We're looking at temperatures in those 60s across the board. No 70s except Lexington there and going back toward Louisville as well. Your out the door forecast features temperatures that will climb into the 80s later on today and we'll see some spotty chances for some pop ups in the heat of the day this afternoon. The rest of that forecast on the way here in just a few minutes. Will. All righty, Brandon, thank you. Well, another change coming to the Trump administration. Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats is stepping down next month. John Lawrence reports. Dan Coats made it official on Sunday. In a letter to President Trump, the director of national intelligence says he is ready to move on to the next chapter of my life. The former Republican senator from Indiana took the position in 2017. His last day will be August 15th. Dan Coats has been DNI for over two years. It's a normal tenure for director of national intelligence. But let's be very clear. Donald Trump is his own director of intelligence. Coates received bipartisan praise after his announcement. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell tweeted that thanks to Coates' leadership, the intelligence community has made a great leap since 2016 to defend our democracy. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi said Coates was respected by those on both sides of the aisle as an American patriot. President Trump announced in a Sunday tweet that he's nominating Congressman John Ratcliffe as a successor. The Republican from Texas raised his profile at last week's congressional hearings with former special counsel Robert Mueller. Donald Trump is not above the law. He's not. But he damn sure shouldn't be below the law, which is where volume two of this report puts him. Ratcliffe said in a tweet that he is deeply grateful for the opportunity. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Now, Vice President Mike Pence was a close ally of Coates, thanks to the long history that dated back to their congressional days. However, the same could not be said with President Trump. President Trump repeatedly fumed about Coates and confidants suggested he considered firing him. Well, President Trump tweeted again Sunday about Maryland Representative Elijah Cummings in his Baltimore district, a day after his tweets raised an outcry. Widespread backlash continues to mount after the president on Saturday called Cummings district a disgusting rat and rodent infested mess where no human would want to be living. On CBS's Face the Nation, White House Acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney said the tweets were not racist, but a reaction to critical comments from the representative about conditions at federal detention centers at the border. The president is pushing back against what he sees as wrong. It's how he's done in the past, and he'll continue to do in the future. Representative Cummings District is just over 40 is just more than 50% African American and includes a large portion of Baltimore. It is home to the national headquarters of the NAACP and Johns Hopkins University. Well, President Trump signed an asylum agreement with Guatemala Friday afternoon that could limit the ability of some Central American migrants to claim asylum in the U.S. The agreement commits Guatemala to offering asylum to migrants who seek it when they're moving through the country. Acting Homeland Security Secretary Kevin McAleenan says migrants who still choose to journey to the U.S. to claim asylum will be returned to Guatemala. He said the agreement is expected to go into effect in August. The agreement comes after President Trump threatened Guatemala earlier this week with tariffs and remittance fees.
Now some big names in Kentucky are getting ready for Fancy Farm. The political picnic is this Saturday in Graves County. Kentucky's race for governor is expected to take center stage this year. Both Governor Matt Bevin and Attorney General Andy Bashir will be at Fancy Farm. Senator Mitch McConnell will also be in attendance. Some no shows include Senator Rand Paul and Democratic candidate for U.S. Senate Amy McGrath. This is the 139th year for the St. Jerome Fancy Farm picnic. Fancy Farm marks the traditional start of the fall campaign season. Well, three people were shot at Bar Louis in Lexington early Sunday morning. When police arrived, they found a man on the ground outside the bar with a gunshot wound. Two other victims, both women, later walked into hospitals. According to officers, the victim's injuries are non-life threatening. Investigators say witnesses told them they saw a man carrying a handgun standing over one of the victims. Meanwhile, gunfire broke out in New York Saturday night, leaving one person dead and 11 others injured. Police say the shooting happened during an event at a park in Brooklyn. Officers say the victims were taken to a nearby hospital where one of them, a 38-year-old man, died. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio said the shooting shattered a peaceful neighborhood event and promised to, quote, do everything in our power to keep this community safe and get guns off our streets. There is no word of any arrests at this time. A tornado caused extensive damage in Rome and surrounding areas after it touched down Sunday. Six cars were overturned in Fossane and the roofs were ripped off of several homes in the area. One woman who was in her smart car died after the strong winds picked up her vehicle and slammed it to the ground, according to CNN affiliate Sky TG24. Lieutenant Stephanie Stallings with Georgia State Patrol says at least one employee was hit with a ransomware attack. They made the discovery when one Department of Public Safety employee got a notification on their computer Friday morning and notified their IT department who could not identify where it came from. Mark Rash, a cybersecurity expert, says it can affect one machine or hundreds of machines and that it's not uncommon for police agencies to be the victims of these types of cyber attacks and ransomware. What happens in a ransomware situation is that the attacker gets into the computer system of the victim and then they encrypt or scramble everything that's on a computer or on a network. He says rebuilding takes time and often places that need to be up and running quickly are targeted because they are more likely to pay the ransom. Georgia Department of Public Safety is not giving specifics on the ransom aware attack other than it has halted. It has not halted operations. Well, the Better Business Bureau finds military families are at higher risk of fraud. Military consumers report losing a median of $200 when falling victim to a scam. According to the BBB Scam Tracker, that's 32% higher than the $152 reported by all consumers in 2018. Relocation forces military consumers to make quicker purchasing decisions than the general population. The Bureau says... The high rate of fraud happens despite protections that are in place to protect service members and their families. One of the shooters in a 1998 school shooting in the Jonesboro, Arkansas area died in a car crash Saturday night. Drew Grant of Missouri was 33 years old. Police say another driver hit Grant's vehicle head on Saturday. The other driver also died. Three other people were hospitalized. Drew Grant changed his name from Andrew Golden after the 1998 shooting. He was 11 years old and when he and a 13 year old boy fatally shot four students and a teacher on the schoolyard at Westside Middle School. He and the other shooter were not charged as adults and were released from prison on their 21st birthdays. Well, newly released video shows the Coast Guard chasing down suspected drug smugglers. In the video, the suspects are seen throwing large bags from their high speed boat. The Coast Guard says 2,300 pounds of cocaine was seized in this one case. The haul made up part of the 26,000 pounds of drugs the Coast Guard seized and unloaded Friday. Well, two people are in jail after a traffic stop turned into a drug bust in Wayne County, West Virginia. Sheriff Rick Thompson said deputies pulled over a car on Route 152 in Lavalette Sunday, where they say they found the passenger packaging small bags of crystal meth to sell. Deputies arrested Jody Hine from Wilsondale and John Atkins of Lavalette. They are charged with possession of intent to deliver and conspiracy to distribute. Both men were taken to Western Regional Jail.
Well, your time is now 641 on this Monday. Let's send it on over to Brandon to give us a breakdown of what should be, a, for the most part, a pretty nice day. Brandon? Yeah, outside of the fog this morning, Will, we're going to continue to see that across most areas like Whitesburg this morning. So be extra careful. Use those low beams. Down in the Cumberland Valley, pretty rough. Less than one mile of visibility. Harlan and Middlesboro down to zero visibility once again. In Jones, we'll still take it easy down that way. Take it easy along the I-64 corridor between Moorhead and Nashville. And there is some dense fog. And again, a lot of these sensors up on the airport ridge so while that fog in the valley, so just give yourself plenty of time. Temperatures back to 70 in Wise already. That was kind of a quick warm up over there. A lot of folks in neighboring counties there in the low 60s to mid 60s. 65 here in Hazard, 67 Pikeville, 68 in Prestonsburg. Some of the warmer spots. Your 12 hour planner. We're taking it up to 86 today. Maybe a little bit warmer in some areas, and we'll see those chances for pop up showers and storms in the heat of the day. 10 percent or less. One more fairly nice day before the rain chances come back with a cold front tomorrow. Will. All righty, Brandon, thank you. Well, we will have stories that are trending on WIMT.com next. As always, thank you for joining us right here on Mountain News this morning.